last weekend. Isn't my rosemary wreath absolutely fantastic? Now, as the florist that teaches, you'd expect me to tell you all about rosemary for making wreaths. But what about using rosemary to make salt, tea, a lovely cold drink, or even some flavoured oils? Hello, I'm Julie, and I am the florist that teaches. You'll find my channel full of crafting and flower arranging activities. So last weekend, I was lucky enough to go up to a friend's allotment and she let me pick loads and loads of blackberries and then she gave me an armful of rosemary and I thought, what am I going to do with it? I really love getting creative with natural plant materials. And for me, that doesn't just mean making a door wreath or arranging a vase of flowers. It's making things I can use around my home too. Things I can eat, things I can drink and things I can think about for gifting as Christmas presents. Now, did you know that rosemary is a rich source of antioxidants anti and anti-inflammatory compounds? It's known to boost your immune system and improve your blood and circulation. I'm reading my notes here. And it all, it's also said, this has really interested me as well, when I was trained to be a florist, we always used to add a sprig of rosemary into funeral tributes and the motto was Rosemary for Remembrance. And I've just done a search on the internet and it says that rosemary is known as being a cognitive stimulant which helps improve memory. Also boost, said to boost alertness, intelligence and gives you focus. So the first thing I always do when I've got a new project is to make myself a cup of tea. And that's a really easy way to use your rosemary. It does take at least 10 to 15 minutes to brew and get this lovely honey peachy tone to it. Rosemary is also said to relieve problems in digestion and can be helpful in calming an upset stomach. But if you're in any doubt at all about using rosemary for health purposes, do make sure you check with your own healthcare professionals and make sure you aware yourself of all the facts. So as well as making the tea, I've also made myself a cold drink. We always have a supply of cold water in the house. I run the water direct from the tap and keep it in a carafe in the fridge. So the easy thing to do is to add a sprig of rosemary into your carafe in the fridge and drink that. But what I've actually done here is to use some of my cold tea and I just topped it up with ice cubes and it makes a really refreshing drink. That sun's gonna shine in my eyes now. I decided to try my hand at making rosemary salt. So I took about a cupful of molden sea salt and a really good handful of the rosemary, taking it off the woody stems and started to blend it down. So the recipe I found said to blend it for eight minutes and it really does take a long time pulsing it with your blender until the rosemary is nice and fine. And once you have got the sort of consistency that you want, you need to mix it with some regular table salt and then I spread it out on a baking tray and put it in the sun to shine. Now, if I was to do this again, I wouldn't have used the expensive sea salt to blend the rosemary because I paid quite a lot of money for those expensive crystals. So I would use the um, table salt to blend the rosemary in first and then for the added texture, add in the high quality sea salt afterwards. Once I've mixed my salts and my rosemary together, I'm then spreading them out onto a lined baking tray and leaving them in a sunny spot to dry out for about an hour or so. The recipe for this with a good handful of the rosemary, one part sea salt and three parts table salt. Next, I decided to have a go at making some infused oil. So the recipe for this called for some good quality olive oil. Now we don't cook with olive oil, we only use it for salad dressing. So I thought if I was going to use this rosemary infused oil for my roast potatoes, for instance, that I would just use a regular vegetable oil. So here I am, I've taken a good handful of the rosemary, which I've taken off the stems, and I've just crushed them slightly in my hand so that they um, release the fragrance. 
and then I'm putting them in the oil and letting it warm through without getting hot for about eight to ten minutes and then I set it aside for an hour just to really infuse and then what I'll do is strain it through a funnel lined with kitchen towel and then bottle it up. Now if I was going to make my flavoured oil again I think I would do it slightly differently. So although I just gently heated my oil through and let the rosemary infuse, once it had filtered through the kitchen towel into the decorative bottle it did have quite a cloudy colour to it and I think in hindsight I would have made my job much easier if I had just put a sprig of the rosemary into the cold oil and I could have kept it there for decorative purposes or have taken it out once it had done its job. And now back to the flower arrangings. I'm going to use the rest of my rosemary to make a decorative wreath, not to hang up on my front door. I'm going to hang this up on the peg rail in my kitchen. And as the rosemary dries out, I'll be able to use it to make more tea or to add into my cooking. I'm using a metal hoop to make my wreath on. You could do this using string to wrap your rosemary sprigs and tie them in place. But I prefer using binding wire because I just feel it holds more effectively. If you sometimes work with string, it can get a bit loose and you don't want your wreath to fall apart. So the first thing I do is go through all my bunches of rosemary and I'm cutting them into lengths that are probably about 10 or 12 centimetres long. I then gather together some of the sprigs in my hand and hold them onto the wreath frame. You'll notice that some of my rosemary has got a slight bend to it, so I'm sort of matching the natural shape of the rosemary to the curve of my wire frame. And then holding my wire tautly, I bind over the woody ends of the stem three or four times and then come along with the next piece of rosemary. So I let the tips of the second piece of the rosemary sit over the woody stems that I bound in and just repeat this all the time. So you'll find the time you get round to the end of your wreath, you'll hardly see the wire at all because it's always covered up by the next bundle of rosemary. As I thought I had loads and loads of rosemary, I had my stems stem lengths quite long and I was quite generous when I made the little bundles in my hand but um, when I got through to the end I was really scrabbling around for extra pieces to finish off and it also meant I didn't have enough rosemary to make my apple and rosemary infused jelly so I had to do that a few days later. From beginning to end it probably only took me 10 or 15 minutes to make up my wreath it was quite a lovely activity to do. I would highly recommend, if you're able to, to do it outside because it does make quite a mess. I sat in my garden, well, I stood in my garden under the, in the sunshine, under my pergola, with a cold drink to hand, which made the whole experience really pleasurable. I've now nearly finished my wreath, but there always seems to be one more bundle that you need to attach in. So you need to lift up the tips of the first bundle of rosemary you added in and then tuck the woody stems of your last bundle of rosemary. So it looks like one continuous circle and you can't see where you began and where you finished. This is the back side of my wreath so you can see where I've done all my wire binding and as I flick it over you can see that it's definitely the top side there. This is a lovely fragrant wreath and my hands smell absolutely lovely for ages afterwards. So you decide where you want to display the wreath. I, in the end, put it up on the peg rail in my kitchen. I'm just showing it off here next to my freshly brewed tea. Now that my rosemary wreath is finished and my salt has dried out, I'm going to transfer it into these small jars. So the ones with the red lids are the type of jam jars you get when you go out for a cream tea. So I always save them. And I'm going to take a piece of greaseproof paper and fold it in half and then make a cone so that when I spoon the salt into it, hopefully not too much of it is going to spill. I'm actually thinking about it now as I'm editing the video, I wonder why I didn't just use my funnel again. Perhaps it was because it was still damp from the oil that I was filtering earlier on. So the piece of greased paper was a bit fiddly, but it did the job. 
and when it came to filling my tiny jam pots I ended up using my tablespoon and because I was filling the pots over the lined grease proof tray I knew that any bits of the salt that spilled would be collected in the tray and then I could with my last jar just take that whole sheet of grease proof paper fold it in half and then tip the salt into the last pot a bit like you would when you're using glitter when you're crafting and you want to put the glitter back in the tube when you've finished. I'm going to put my jars to one side and make up little hampers for my family for Christmas. But there's one last thing I want to do with the last um, of my rosemary, which I actually did have to go out and pick from the garden. I wanted to make an apple and rosemary jelly and an apple and rosemary cheese. So here I have diced but not peeled or cored um, about four cooking apples and I've put in sliced lemon added a little bit of water, just enough to sort of allow the juices to flow, my sprigs of rosemary, and I'm just bringing them to the simmer, and when they get soft, I mash them down. And then after that, I then strain the liquid through a muslin, and then make jelly in the normal way. So you measure out how much liquid you've got, so for every pint of liquid, you add a pound of sugar, um, melt that down into the mix and then bring it to a rapid boil until you reach setting point. This jelly bag set is quite new to me and it is so handy, much easier than trying to make your own contraption using muslin squares. And if you're interested in sourcing something similar, I'll leave a link to this one in the show notes underneath the video. I then use the pulp that's left over from the juice straining out of the jelly bag to make fruit cheese, which is quite easy to do. Thank you for watching through to the end of the video. And if you've got any ideas of how you can use rosemary creatively, do share them in the comments below. And if you'd like my recipes for my apple and rosemary jelly or the apple and rosemary cheese I'm going to make, let me know and I will send you the details. That's all for me for now, and I'll see you next time. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.